Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are still filming in Estonia, as you can maybe tell from the background. And for this review, we've got a beer that I think will be really pretty damn good actually. So, very curious to see how it turns out. This one is half Estonian on the home side and half American on the away side. Both of the breweries involved here have featured on the channel before. And in fact, the American brewery were the first one that I ever tried from Chicago. So, yeah, let's see how this one turns out. So, for the home side of things, then, we are going to go down to Tartu in the southeast of Estonia, and we're having a look at another beer from Puasta Prulikoda. This particular beer is called The Two Sons, and it is a double dry hopped, double New England IPA brewed in collaboration with Pipeworks Brewing Company from Chicago in Illinois over in America. So, this beer is a very, very new release at my time of being here in Estonia, the start of August. 2020 and um, yeah as I say I've had very positive experiences with both of these breweries I've not had too many IPAs from Puasta I have to say most of the Puasta beers that I've had have been dark beers and I think the very first one was the the uh, Mari Berlina Weisse actually so yeah this is one of the first IPAs you'll see me review from Puasta Pipeworks on the other hand uh, one of my subscribers Jesse he sent me over three cans of Pipeworks, the Ninja vs Unicorn, the Lizard King, and um, I forget what the last one was called actually. Uh, I think it was Ninja vs Unicorn, come to think of it. So yeah, I had Pipeworks um, just a little while before they actually arrived over here in Europe. But yeah, Pipeworks, you will see them every so often uh, on the continent over here. But yeah, very, very good Chicago brewery in my experience and the first Chicago beer that I ever tried. As some of you may know, Chicago is one of the best beer cities uh, in the world these days. You know, there's about 150 breweries, I think, in the uh, the greater Chicago area, if not more. So uh, yeah, crazy numbers of breweries over there. I I th well, thinking that number might be wrong, but yeah, very, very good beer city these days. I do need to go back, meet up with Jesse again and do a little bit more exploring. But yeah, very nice to have both of these breweries on the channel once again, and cool to see an American-Estonian collaboration as well. Two very good beer countries, as we know. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. As always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about both the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, so link to my other reviews that I've done, both from Puasta Prolicoda and from Pipeworks Brewing Company. No doubt you'll see more added to both of those lists in the fairly near future, but you will see Puasta first, of course, easier for me to get. But there's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Estonian beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the American beers this beer will appear in both of those lists because it is dual nationality and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Puasta then, since these guys are the home brewery, we will go with them first. So Puasta, as I've told you on numerous occasions, are based in Tartu in southeastern Estonia and the company was founded back in 2016 by Eromander, Lauri Eidemann and Ular Kalurand. So Lowry comes from a background in IT, while Ula is a businessman that specialised in restaurants and bars, and Aero, on the other hand, was the man behind the brewing. So he had been a home brewer for a good number of years. He started back in 2011 and he was brewing in his summer house in Pusa, and uh, he released his first commercial beers back in 2014 under the name Blessed Virgin, and these proved to be very successful. The name Puasta, of course, though, is actually derived from the name of the village where um, his summer house was located, actually. He was telling me that in the interview. You can go and watch my interview with Aero if you're interested. He's a very, very talented brewer and, you know, a very, very nice guy, I have to say. I was really liked Aero, actually, so you'll see, I'm sure you'll see him on the channel at some point in the future. But anyway, um, these guys started out as a gypsy brewery and they brewed in various other breweries around Estonia, mainly in Tallinn, I believe they brewed with Poyula, 
for quite a while actually um, but then they started up their own brewery in 2015 they started that towards the end of 2015 and um, then they were working on the brewery for a good few months they opened it up in September of 2016 and you can find the brewery on Tay Street in the southeast of the city it's kind of in the middle of a very industrial area actually maybe about five or so six kilometers outside of the city center and um, but they've expanded the fermentation capacity there quite significantly already there is further space to do that and um, but they are producing around 3,500 hectolitres of beer per year um, and they have they're running a 2,500 litre system if I remember correctly that came from China if I remember rightly um, but yeah they also have the Kelder bar in the city centre which is really nice you can go and check my out and about video of that that will publish sometime not long after this video if not before so do check out my out and about video at Puas de Keller very nice bar and uh, as of August 2020 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced in the region of 150 different kinds of beer so yeah probably one of the best known Estonian craft breweries these days um, we get their things quite regularly over in Sweden of course and uh, they are exported you know Quite, uh, quite widely throughout the European continent these days. I'm not sure if they have gone further than that. I'm not sure if they've gone out to Japan and things. Um, but yeah, Puasta is definitely one of the Estonian breweries that you want to keep an eye on, actually. They're doing some very, very nice stuff. And I would say most of the beers that I have tried from these guys have been big imperial stouts and things like that. And I guess um, this is a style that they have become quite revered for. And Aero did give me some very, very nice imperial stouts to try from them. Uh, so you will see me review those at some point uh, at some point fairly soon on the channel I've got some really nice beers to try from them so um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Puas de Pruli Coda for the moment if you want to learn a little bit more you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that to keep up to date with the, la with the latest goings on and of course you can follow the Puas de Kelder uh, Facebook and Instagram pages as well I believe that those are kind of kept separate so um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then but make sure you check out Puas de Let's move on to the American side of things then. So on to Pipeworks Brewing Company. So as I've told you already, Pipeworks Brewing are based in Chicago in Illinois and the company was founded back in 2012 by BJ Olson and Garrett Lewis. So the two men were home brewers when they met, and they met when they started working together at West Lakeview Liquors in Chicago and then they were educated in larger scale brewing by Brauerei de Struze in Oostvleteren in Belgium. Very, very good brewery incidentally, one that I do need to go and visit I have to say. Um, but in 2011 they launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise the $30,000 that they needed to fund their own brewery and they founded the brewery in the Buckton area of Chicago. In January of 2013, they won the Rate Beer Award for the Best New Brewery of 2012, which is you know, quite a considerable accolade considering how many breweries there are, not just in America, but in the wider world. You know, that was when that was during boom time and these guys, you know, really made a name for themselves. Um, but um, in 2015, they opened up a new brewery uh, on a second site on West McLean Avenue, where today all of the production takes place. They did retain the old brewery for a period of time to uh, to brew sour beers and things like that, if I remember correctly. Um, but um, it was sold off, I think, maybe 2017, if I remember right. Can't remember that. I need to make. I need to investigate that for the notes. But yeah, they had their original brewery for a period of time. Were brewing sour beers there, but now all of the production takes place on West McLean Avenue. As of August 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced over 450 different kinds of beer. So you know that's pretty damn impressive. That's well over uh, a one beer per month, I think. Um, over the course of their history. But yeah, you'll find beers over here such as Lizard King, um, Ninja vs Unicorn, and um, yeah, you know, that's those ones are, are, uh, are very, very nice in my experience. So uh, yeah, definitely one of the Chicago breweries you want to check out, and hopefully we can go uh, next time when I go over to see Jesse again, we can go to the Pipeworks tap room. I'm sure we will manage to find some time for that. So um, yeah, that's all I can tell you about Pipeworks Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram, and of course you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all those different beers that they've done. So yeah, that is the history section of this video covered, guys. And as you can see, the can has been sweating once again because of the lovely uh, very high Estonian summer temperatures. So yeah, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. As you can see, lovely artwork here. Puasta, of course, do have 
So I'm really, really nice artwork on some of their beers. They've got a lot of beers that are named uh, after space themes and things like that. I really like, um, I really do like these, uh, the, some of the artwork that you'll get on these things. It says on the side here, Pipe Works, um, wait, no, that's the Estonian, uh, Mega Juicy Double IPA brewed in collaboration with uh, Pipe Works Brewing Company. So, uh, yeah, there you can see on the side here, this is Puasta. That's their symbol, the nice red one. And you can see, I don't know how you're going to see that because it's quite shiny. There um, is the uh, Pipeworks Brewing Company symbol. But yeah, this one is a double dry hopped, double New England IPA. 8% ABV, it says 45 IBUs on it. Um, but this one is brewed with Enigma, Mosaic and Centennial, from what I understand. So Enigma, beautiful Australian hop, lovely kind of green grapey sort of things. A little bit of red fruit to it. Mosaic we know is kind of tangerine and orangey, and uh, Centennial is the lovely kind of lemon hop, actually. But yeah, the two sons, really like that. Um, so yeah, very, very cool. I guess you could say Piper's Brewing Company are one of the sons of Chicago Brewing, and Puasta, of course, are one of the sons of Estonia Brewing. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, 8% this one. Let's get it out and get on with the tasting then. I think I paid like €4.50. Euros for this can, so in dollars, yeah, about 450 for this one, 330 mils. Um, so yeah, for what it is, I think four euros fifty. It's a pretty damn good price. And I mean, you have to remember that Estonia is fairly cheap because um, you know it's the the current. You know, it's a very developed country and very you know educated and quite prosperous country these days. But it's just the the kind of wages and stuff haven't kind of caught up to. Uh, Western Europe and things like that yet. So 450 for a double New England IP, I think, is pretty good. I would probably end up paying, I'd probably pay not far off that in system, will I get to be honest? Yeah, I actually would probably pay roughly around the same. I would think maybe 50 kroners or something like that. Um, so yeah, this one, yeah, 4 euros 50, 4 dollars 50, maybe about, yeah, like 3.75, 3 pounds 75, something like that. So um, yeah, but as you can see, and as you would expect from uh, a New England, uh, double IP. This one's poured lovely and big and hazy. It's got a beautiful, um, you know, this one's one of the hazy ones that you're going to come across. The thing is, you know, when you have these beers uh, with oats and wheat and everything like that, and then the higher you go up the alcohol scale, um, the more hazy and things they are going to be. And at 8%, this one's just kind of in its prime. I've always felt with the New Englands, unless you put a bit of sweet caramel or something like that in them, you do struggle to go above the sort of 8% mark. But this one poured with a lovely kind of quarter finger of, uh, or maybe third finger of a frothy, perfect white head there. That's just faded away to be a little thin foamy layer. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. And you can just see a few little ones going up towards that. As we know, this is not a kind of proper beer glass, if you like, but it's got the nice kind of wide um, top that we would want and the nice kind of thin uh, thin edge to it. But yeah, lovely colour, this one. I would say, in terms of the New England Double, one of the kind of lighter yellow ones. It looks a bit like pineapple juice or something like that. So yeah, let's have a closer look at the aroma and see how we get on. Ah, yeah, straight away with this one, the Enigma, I think, is pretty obvious. Um... The Enigma, as I said, it's actually kind of similar to like Nelson Sauvin or Haller Tower Blanc. Uh, it's got that lovely kind of white green grapey note to it, but you do just get a little bit of that kind of cranberry-ish, red berry um, type note out of it. And you can smell those lovely smooth white green grapey notes coming out of this one. At the same time though, the beer actually does have a hell of a lot of floral character to it. All of these hops are, you know, about 12, 13, 14% alpha acid, so that's not surprising. You're going to get a hell of a lot of, um, you will get a hell of a lot of, of lovely floral character out of it. But the fruitiness at the same time, the more that you smell of this, the kind of smoother the fruits become. You can smell a bit of the kind of tangerine oranges, that little bit of oily tangerine orange, but at the same time, mixing in with that sort of floral spice that the beer has. Um, you can definitely pick up some of that Centennial, that lovely zesty lemon of the Centennial. Um, otherwise, you know, I think the fruits are very, very, very smooth. I would say, yeah, lovely kind of juicy, slightly oily tangerine orange. The white greeny grapey notes are in there. And you've got the zesty, um, the kind of zesty lemon from the Centennial as well. The red fruits are not too obvious. You do have to kind of search for those a little bit in my mind. But... Um, yeah, it's kind of got all the things you would expect from these. There might be a few other kind of softer fruits in there, like a little bit of apricot or a bit of mango or something like that. But, um, 
yeah, to me is pretty straight up. Yeah, oranges from the from the mosaic, um, kind of white, green, grape you notes from the Enigma. Beautiful hop that I wish more European breweries would use it, but I think it's quite expensive. And yeah, they've got that lemony zesty note there. On the green side of things, I'd say that this beer is quite floral and a little touch spicy. There's a bit of lighter grassiness in there too, as well as a bit of earthiness, which is one of the kind of trademarks of mosaic. Um, but yeah, it does smell nice. Um, it's got everything you can kind of expect if you know these three hops. Uh, on the malty side of things, to me this one really smells very, very smooth actually. Good little bit of creaminess to it. I think this is more, I think from the aroma, this might be a more oaty leaning IPA. You can pick out, I think there is a bit of wheat in this one. I'll check that on the can in a second. I do think there is a bit of wheaty uh, note to this one, but lovely white bready note, lovely kind of creamy oaty quality, and then a little bit of, um, you can pick up just a little tiny bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness out of this one. So uh, yeah, let me just check. Does this one have wheat in it? Does it say? Yeah, it does have oats and wheat in it. So yeah, right, you can get a little bit of that wheaty um, bitiness out of it. But yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we got on. This one is the Two Sons, uh, a double dry hops, double New England IPA, coming in at 8% ABV, a collaboration between Puas de Prulicora and Tartu in the southeast of, uh, of Estonia and Pipeworks Brewing Company from Chicago in Illinois over in America. The first brewery that I encountered from, uh, from Chicago, actually, as far as I remember. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, Terrible Six. Yeah. That is pretty nice, I have to say. Um, yeah, very, very smooth. My first impression of this beer is that it's really, really smooth, actually. Um, solid effort from both breweries. Um, I think the first beers, if I remember rightly, the first ones that I had from Pipeworks were actually more West Coast um, IPAs. So it was a red IPA. I think the Lizard King was a regular. I think the Lizard King might have been a pale ale. Um, <clears throat> and I forget, I think... Yeah, Ninja versus Unicorn. I think, you know, Blood of the Unicorn was the other one. Yeah, Blood, Blood of the Unicorn was the red beer. Ninja vs. Unicorn, I think, was a double IPA, and then I think Lizard King was like a paleo, um, but they were more West Coasty. So I think this might also be the first New England that I've had from uh, from Pipeworks Brewing Company. My last encounter with these guys, of course, were the two beers, the Omaki and the, I forget the name of the other one, the two Imperial Stouts that they brewed with Shiga Kogan, Tamamura Honten in Japan. I had those back at Christmas, of course. So this is my first encounter with Pipeworks in like seven, eight months. So yeah, but this is my first New England too. But and it's pretty damn nice, I have to say. But yeah, I have to say, um, this is a really nice one. But Puasta, I mean, I've mainly had my main encounters with these guys have been. Um, you know, I think my main encounters with Puasta have been, um, you know, have been stronger, darker beers and things like that. Um, so, I think this could be, will, will be the first New England that I've had, apart from the ones I drank with Aero. I think this is the first New England review I've done from Puasta as well. But yeah, both breweries, so first New England from both of these breweries come to think of it. Hmm. But yeah, for me, this one, it's really nice. It gets a bit more bitey the more that you drink of it. Actually, it really starts to open up. But yeah, let's try and break down the flavour a little bit with this one then. So straight away with this beer, you get a lovely white bready. You no, know, that blankets the middle of your tongue. When you go towards the back third of your palate, the wheat is a lot more obvious. You get a, love, a bit of that kind of big bitey, kind of wheaty quality. There's a few other grains in there, maybe a little touch of brown bread or something. But you can really feel that kind of wheat wheaty sort of thickness kind of building up a little bit there but really quite nice and quite bitey. If you move further forward on the tongue there um, you can feel that kind of white bready base as I say but as you move towards the front third of the palate, the, 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 towards the, the front of that middle third of your palate you do get a bit more of a kind of oaty creaminess coming out of the beer. Yeah, um, but this one, in fairness, it's not the... I actually find this one quite clean in a lot of ways. It has a good level of thickness to it, but it's not the creamiest of um, 
of New England that I've had in fairness. It's got a little bit of oiliness to it, but at the same time it still comes across as, qu as quite clean. Mouthfeel of this is interesting, but we'll talk about that a little bit later, of course. But yeah, in the middle of your palate, you will get a few kind of biscuity notes out of it. It's got a little tiny bit of sweetness, but I find this one, the pale malt, I think, comes out of this one quite nice. As I say, it's a bit more wheaty and bitey towards the back of the palate, and then there's just a little bit of the oaty creaminess, but the oaty creaminess isn't too prominent. This one is more like a kind of straight up bready, leaning New England IPA for me. It is a little bit more kind of barley malt leaning, if that makes sense, rather than leaning towards the wheaty, the wheat malts or the, the kind of malted oats or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting point about this one. Both uh, other things are quite present in the flavour, but um, I do find this one's a bit more barley maltish for a New England IPA. But I like it. I do like the way that the malt base goes together. And you will find the more that you drink of this, the slightly sweeter the malt base will become. And in fairness, yeah, you do get it smoothening out and thickening up a little bit as well. Uh, the oats do have a nice little bit of sweetness to them almost in the front of the palate too. But um, yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there is a little bit of earthiness there. I think that's the mosaic that's given you that. As you move further forward from that though, the earthiness kind of quickly disappears and you get a really nice kind of floral aromatic -y note towards the uh, the front corners of your palate there. It kind of builds up, you do almost get a little bit of spice out of it in fairness, but around the front curve of the palate um, it's a bit lighter and grassy but there is a good bit of zestiness there. I think maybe from the centennial come to think of it, but as I said earlier, all of the hops in this one are quite high um, alpha acid. The fruity notes in this though, this is where it gets really interesting, so let's look at that. So yeah, um, this is one of these ones where it feels like all the, the you know, all the fruits kind of mixed together. It doesn't really feel like they're kind of separated um, in a way. Like I always talk about the front third of your palate where the fruits come out. You know, having you have little different sections of this. So if you go towards the back of that, you will get a slightly stronger citrusy zesty note out of that. That's where the mixing sort of isn't happening. But then as you move forward from that, you can feel like the kind of juicy, oily sort of white grapey notes from the beer, but you can also feel the kind of um, orangey, the, the oily orange from the, the mosaic kind of doing that. So it's a lovely kind of um, kind of antagonistic thing that's going on there. It's lovely how that just builds together. So you've got um, oily kind of grapey notes, but you've also got that oily tangerine orange there. But again, as you reach the front part of your palate there, the very kind of front tip of your tongue, some lovely um, kind of zesty, lemony qualities from the Centennial. You know, lovely and big and sort of spicy, I think, uh, in some ways as well. You've got some of those floral notes pushing their way out of it. And the further you go into the aftertaste, I think the grapes, the sort of white, greeny grapes, they push their way out a little bit more. But you do also get the impression a little bit of um, some kind of cranberries and juicy berries and stuff like that, actually. So that's an interesting point to make about this one. Yeah, this is really uh, pretty nice, actually. I mean, it's one of these beers that's kind of grown on me a little bit the more that I drink of it. It sort of, I find that this one kind of smoothens out a little bit and it just gets a little bit more oily on the fruity side of things too. And I really like that about this. Um, so yeah, this is a solid, solid New England double IP. But when you consider the breweries involved here, not surprised. You know, Pipeworks, very good pedigree in America, Puasta. You know, these guys are doing some really great stuff as well in my experience. It'd be quite cool if this beer can act as a gateway to getting Puasta over into America a little bit more because they're a very, very capable brewery in my mind. And like I said, Aero, uh, Aero Mander, very, very nice guy as well. Spent a lot of time with me during that, uh, that afternoon to do the interview and things. So, uh, yeah, solid, solid beer from these guys. But, you know, I'm not surprised. I know what these breweries can do. But this is definitely worth trying. It's nice to see the Enigma Hop getting a little bit more exposure as well, actually. So, um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, let's look at that. Um, I'd say this beer is kind of pretty much mid-bodied. Leaning towards full body a little bit. Carbonation is very smooth. Like I said, the mouthfeel of this is quite interesting. It's not the thickest or creamiest of New England's that you're going to come across. It feels very clean, but I'm finding the more and more that I drink of this, I start to think it leans slightly towards the oily side of things, but it does have a degree of smoothness um, coming out of it as well. Um, 
but yeah, I, I really like the mouthfeel of this one. As I say, it's a beer that is definitely, uh, once your mouth adjusts to this and you start to, um, you know, you start to appreciate this one more and more and more as you drink it. Um, but yeah, on the hoppy bitterness side, things like I said at the start, it's 45 IBUs. I think I would have guessed this was a bit higher. I probably would have guessed like maybe 50, maybe even 60 with this one. I would have thought it was a little bit higher than it actually is because it does have a good little bit of um, it does have a good little bit of uh, kind of hoppy bitiness to it. But in fairness, it is double dry hop, so you will get that almost dusty kind of feel around the edge of your palate. And again, it is very fresh. And I think I bought this. I actually bought this one at Coat in uh, here in Tallinn, and it was pretty damn fresh when they got it. I think they got it in on the same day actually, so probably canned that uh, you know the day before or something like that so very very fresh this one I have to say um, but yeah lovely kind of hoppy bitiness to it I would have guessed higher than 45 IBUs the malt base very smooth and um, a little bit of creaminess a little bit of hot wheaty bitiness but overall again I find this one really quite smooth and there is a small degree of sweetness to it fruitiness and um, starts off quite juicy I think but then it develops a more oily character as you drink more and more of this beer. But yeah, this one is really, really nice, and uh, I'm glad I was able to review this one for you. Nice to film a Puasta review for you here in Estonia too. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Two Sons, um, a double dry hopped, double New England IPA, 8% ABV from Puasta Prulicoda in Tartu, in the southeast of Estonia, and Pipeworks Brewing Company from Chicago over in Illinois in the US. Um, awesome beer this, and if you get the chance to try it, I really recommend that you do. I would say to Aero, I think, um, I've not tried too many of their IPAs, as I said, but I think this is really solid, so I would hope that they would, they would consider making this a kind of fairly regular brew, you know, once, twice a year, something like that, at minimum, because this one is pretty damn solid, actually. I've really enjoyed this one. So, um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this review then. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below it. Let me know what your favourite beers are from uh, both from Puasta and from Pipeworks Brewing Company. No doubt you'll see more from both of these breweries at some point in the near future. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. The Two Sons, double dry hops, double New England IPA, 8% ABV from Puasta in Tartu in Estonia and Pipeworks Brewing Company from Chicago and Illinois. Slangen, school, make sure you check out these breweries and try this beer if you get the chance. Cheers.